today, it is the second lecture on the theme of Oriental philosophers' analysis of contemporary human confusion, and the topic of the second lecture is the philosophical fallacy of genetic man and Xi Jinping's ideal of racial superiority. In the late 1980s, due to the fate of the contingency, I once and Xi Jinping become wine friends. In do wine friends get along in the process, we have had many times of conversations, after drinking about the world. At that time, in a conversation, Xi Jinping expressed such a belief, is one of his friends to engage in medical research friends, he is also the same period as the workers and peasants, and soldiers. This friend of his told him that he was going to throw himself into a research project, that is, with the help of genetic engineering and genetic technology, to clone a new human species. He wanted to use a man who is the fittest, most agile, and most intelligent of the Chinese people, and a woman who is the fittest of the Chinese people, to use them as a gene bank to complete his ideal of cloning a new human species. The ideal of creating a new species through cloning. At that time, Xi Jinping directly praised his friend's ideal. He clearly said that if he could take the lead in such a competition of genetic engineering and clone, ah, a new human being, then it would wash away the shame of the Chinese people who had been called the sick man of East Asia for a century. The Chinese people will become one of the most beautiful, the most intelligent, and the most powerful races in the world. This is what Xi Jinping expressed at that time, his idealism of racial superiority, which is particularly noteworthy, and what can be said to have left an indelible impression on me is that at the end of talking about this matter, Xi Jinping actually said that he could realize this ideal as a male gene pool. At that time, Xi Jinping was still relatively young, the kind of strapping about the Western Han dynasty, but from his self-declaration, we can see what kind of arrogant and pathological confidence he had in himself. He thinks he is the most handsome man in China. So, he recommended himself make a gene bank. He told his medical research friends that he could be the source of the male gene bank, and the female gene bank he recommended at that time, then out of respect for women, I will not say his name. I think everyone can imagine who the female gene bank he recommended is. In Xi Jinping's self-confidence, he also expressed what he meant to the so-called new human race in China, the new human race, that is, the ideal of the bodybuilding race. That is, among the billions of Chinese people, all the men are Xi Jinping and all the women are the women he admires, which is the so-called new human in his ideal of Xi Jinping. So when he said these words to me, I just smiled coldly. Why? Because I look at it from a philosophical point of view, his ideal of cloning human beings who are so-called medical friends is full of philosophical fallacies, and I don't want to have any arguments with a confident fool. Xi Jinping was full of confidence in foolish ideals at that time, so here, we have to make a distinction first, that is, a sense of legitimate national pride and dignity. What is the principal difference between him and the evil doctrine of racial superiority? 
legitimate sense of national pride and dignity is based on his intoxication with the aesthetics of his own national culture, which produces a sense of pride and dignity, and a deep training and understanding of the soul of his own national culture. Then the evil doctrine of racial superiority, he must be rooted in, trampling on, and despising the conquering ambition of other races, this is a basic difference. When Xi Jinping expresses his ideal of racial superiority, he is full of such a mentality of revenge on the world. So ethnocentrism, this kind of evil theory, it seems to me, originated in the religious spirit of ancient Jewish wisdom. In ancient Jewish wisdom, there is a famous saying that Jews are God's chosen people, which should be the first expression of racial superiority. The ancient Jewish wisdom wanted to make the Jews the best race in the name of God, enjoying spiritual privileges over all other races. I think this is a spiritual origin, the most classical modern manifestation of racial superiority, is Hitler's racial superiority. Aryan race, in the name of the world's best race, to rule the whole of mankind, to make the whole world into a blonde beast, fate in the hunting ground. So there is another manifestation of racial superiority, which I call political racial superiority, and that is the political racial superiority that communism recognizes. According to the Communist Manifesto and Communist Theory, the Communist Party is a political organization composed of the best people, and in the name of political racial superiority, it should monopolize absolute truth and absolute power to guide the direction of human destiny. So what we said just now, Xi Jinping's ideal of racial superiority, is just a, uh, what we said above, a modern echo of these evil racial superiority theories, is the echo that hit in Xi Jinping's stupid mind. So there are at least two philosophical fallacies in using genetic engineering to clone a new human species. First of all, beauty exists because of the reflection of ugliness, if ugliness disappears, beauty will lose its necessity, significance, and value of existence. Then the creation of what is the only most beautiful person in the world itself makes beauty the only one who is lonely. When the existence of ugliness is denied, beauty itself does not exist, which is a basic common sense judgment. Then from a more profound perspective, we understand that this world, ah, uh, this phenomenal world itself is a dual existence, spiritual and material, spiritual and physical, or with our ancient Chinese philosophical thinking, what yin and yang and so on, the whole world is a dual existence, it can't become a, uh, only the existence of beauty, when there is only one beauty in the world, the foundation of the world's existence will collapse. So the very idea of creating a fittest race by cloning the genes of the fittest man, the fittest woman, is against the common philosophical knowledge of the existence of the phenomenal world, which is his first philosophical fallacy. The second philosophical fallacy is that the fittest person in the world, must be, by virtue of diversity, beauty itself means, the inexhaustible enchantment, means the diversity of a variety of personalities. Beauty is only in the personality, personality annihilation, beauty does not exist. Therefore, the world simply cannot appear, 
the only absolute bodybuilding. If we must pursue such a goal, it is tantamount to making beauty into a valueless and meaningless state. From a very realistic point of view, we can see that Chu Chi because of the mouth, and customs million species, Fan Bingbing as a result of the charm of snake waste, and attract human attention. Lu Tao because as handsome and beautiful young, and the beautiful bride, Zhao Wei because of the eyes such as Ben Yu, and become a symbol of the times, the United States. From all these concrete examples, we can see that beauty is varied, beauty is unrestricted, without diversity, without individuality, there is no beauty. So how could there be the single most fit human race in the world? If we clone the image of a person, the so-called most beautiful image, the most beautiful image, soon in the mutual gaze, will produce extreme disgust, because it has no diversity. In ancient Greece, when the wise put forward a theory of the golden section, according to the theory of the golden section, the human body must reach a certain proportion, it is the most beautiful. In real life, we can find that if there is only one standard, beauty will be strangled. Once again, beauty is beautiful because of diversity, and the diversity of personality, so that the United States surprise the British and Korean, the United States is not subject to any injection of the golden section of such quantitative analysis restrictions, beauty is free and unrestrained, beauty is a variety of, therefore, to create the so-called only the strongest and fittest human beings, in itself against the basic philosophical common sense. Therefore, from the above discussion, we can draw a conclusion that the so-called creation of the fittest human through cloning project is a philosophical fallacy that is innate and unconquerable, and philosophical fallacy is a fundamental fallacy, and the efforts made against philosophical common sense must produce anti-human, even anti-human results in the end. So Xi Jinping, perhaps sincerely, wants to make the Chinese strong, but unfortunately, in his pig's mind, which is destroyed by the garbage knowledge of the Communist Party culture, he obviously does not have the ability to understand a basic fact that without destroying the spiritual colonial rule of the Communist Party culture from the West, the Chinese will never get rid of it. Without destroying the colonial rule of the Communist Party culture from the West, the Chinese will never be able to become the noblest group of human beings, which is called the free people.